Okay, so where to start? Originally, I had a section about bugs that the Steam Deck has that I was going to mention, but because this device keeps getting support and updates so regularly, they kept fixing basically what I was going to talk about, so I've had to do this review over a bit. So yeah, but there is a pretty big issue that I have with the Steam Deck as of right now that has not gotten fixed, so I'll talk about that instead, because any bugs that I mentioned in this review are going to be fixed by like a, a week or two weeks from now so it doesn't really matter there's only one big bug that's present right now that might not so let's get started with the review now i won't lie to you i mostly use my steam deck for emulation and indie or retro games and this thing is amazing when it comes to this retroarch on steam has the added benefit of cloud saves for your controllers save states if you use those and as well as game saves However, some games don't upload the game save. Game Boy Advance and N64 do, but other ones like the PSP emulator don't. So your mileage on this is gonna vary. And for any other emulations I have, like either Yuzu or Wii U or GameCube, EmuDeck is an extremely easy process to set up and use. It's basically just a front end for these games and it's amazing. The Steam Deck automatically shows you which of your games in your library are compatible, kind of compatible, unknown and just straight up won't work. However, there is an issue with this because some games that are marked as not working work perfectly fine, which is a little strange to me. Games like Digimon Cyber Sleuth, No More Heroes, or Honey Pop, yes, Honey Pop, work but they're marked as incompatible or not working which is really weird as these are three single player games with no multiplayer component yet they work perfectly fine it's not even a controller issue so i don't know why they're marked as this another one that i would understand would be persona arena ultimax as that I believe has multiplayer in it, but because of the way that the anti-cheat software even, if it even works on Linux, I would understand that one being marked as not working. But then you have games like Melty Blood, which work, but they're marked as unknown. So I don't really understand when it comes to the, the way Steam categorizes games that work and don't work. So if there's a game you really like on your Steam Deck and it's marked as simply unsupported, just download it and try it out because 9 times out of 10, it will work. It's really up to the community that has the game to give it enough ticks to where Valve will mark it as a compatible game with Steam Deck. So hopefully this helps people because yeah, it's it's weird. A game like uh, even really easy to run games like Honey Pot, it's a visual novel game. It's marked as unsupported while games like No More Heroes and Digimon Cyber Sleuth, which run perfectly fine, are also marked as unsupported. I don't know why that is. This is also strange as a game like GTA San Andres, it's marked in the yellow section, which just means that it's playable, but to get it playable, you have to go into the Linux desktop and change the configuration files because apparently San Andres doesn't load up in the default Steam Deck resolution of 1280 by 800 which is all the more weirder as a game like Manhunt also marked as playable by Steam I'm guessing loads up just fine when you download it and even other games like Star Wars Republic Commandos that one loads up just fine so I don't really understand the way Steam is kind of categorizing their games. While the majority of games are categorized correctly, I'm guessing this is just like a few that go under the table, kind of like they like they just push it out the door because maybe people said it was correct, I'm guessing? Which is even stranger as games like Killing Floor 2 did not load up for me at all. So I don't know if this is just an issue on my version of Killing Floor 2. I did delete everything and then reinstall Steam and it still didn't load up for me. And keep in mind Killing Floor 2 is marked as playable. So I don't know what the issue is or if maybe it's just like on my side or something so this is something that i really can't configure as i would have i've seen people play the game on steam deck so i know it runs on the steam deck but maybe i 
put a setting on or something? I, I doubt it. Now the Steam Deck is a pretty powerful device. It has an RDNA 2 GPU, which means nothing to the average gen user, but I thought I'd mention it for those who are more tech savvy. And I'm not gonna lie to you, I, I like to do this where I will run games in 4K regardless of whatever GPU it has just to see what it's like. And surprisingly for RetroArch, this worked pretty well. Perfect Dark ran pretty well at a nice 30 FPS locked, kind of. It did dip into the 20s quite a bit, but it ran pretty well and it basically gave me the full N64 experience back when Perfect Dark was released on the N64. So if you want to play the game at a lower resolution like 1080 or 1440, I have no reason to not suspect that the Steam Deck can run it perfectly fine. Now I do have to mention this because of how often I see people mess up their Steam Decks day one due to not following the one simple golden rule for any new technology, which is updating your Steam Deck when you first receive it. I have seen so many people complain about how bad the Steam Deck is because of how how buggy it is but they're still running on the very first iteration of the firmware guys it takes like five minutes to update and for those of you that don't have wi-fi i don't know just go to the library or mcdonald's or just hotspot it from walmart and update because nine times out of ten any weird or wacky bugs that you encounter can be fixed with updates in fact, there's a whole update that just fixes the fan by adding a fan curve so that you can, the fan is now, it's it's silent more. It's more silent now, which is good. Valve is constantly updating this thing and it's really important to make sure you get the newest update because nine times out of 10, it will fix any bugs that you have, which is good for me because then that just means this review is gonna take even longer to make. Now, with that said, there is one big bug or glitch, whatever it is, that has still not been fixed that if it doesn't get fixed then any Q3 players will certainly experience. I hope not because it's a pretty bad bug and it essentially has to do with the battery and the percentage that's left. Now the way this works is that when you charge your Steam Deck sometimes it won't charge because it'll be stuck at zero percent. However the hardware itself will and if you turn it off and back on it'll mark what it's originally supposed to be at in terms of a percentage or you'll notice that your battery will start to drain instantly like extremely fast like you'll go from 100% to 0% in like less than 10 minutes which is completely unacceptable as this does turn off your Steam Deck completely and you cannot turn it on until you connect it to a charger so if anyone is outside and this happens to you and keep in mind this is random this isn't like a set pattern this is completely random the first time it happened to me i thought my battery was faulty until i searched it up online and i saw that i wasn't the only one with this issue also keep in mind i'm not a q1 player i'm a q2 so this problem has been around since the release of the steam deck and it still hasn't gotten updated even though people have kept reporting it i don't know why valve hasn't updated this maybe it's just something they have to test more but someone posted a fix online which the fact we have to do this is pretty ridiculous but essentially you have to have a game running and have your steam deck drain completely to zero percent like actually zero percent and then you have to recharge it overnight so that the next morning the deck learns how much battery it has and then that will fix the issue for a while, but it still happens where you'll turn it on one day and it will go from 100% to 0% like 10 minutes. And I'm sure that's not a hardware issue. That's more of a software thing because when it works properly, the battery, it works great. It lasts for a long time like it should. So hopefully that isn't an issue for players in Q3 as I'm hoping Q2 is when and it gets fixed and if not then you q3 players will experience the battery glitch uh, it's not a reason to return your steam deck as this isn't a hardware issue like i said this is a software issue that i'm guessing has to do with the steam os and linux and this isn't just exclusive to the steam os this also happens when you're on the linux desktop so i'm more privy to believing this is a battery percentage glitch 360 no scope issue that valve just has to get fixed and as long as we 
report it to them, they'll fix it eventually. But this is a pretty big issue because like I said, once it goes from 100% to 0%, you cannot turn on your deck until you plug it in. And sometimes it will just get stuck at 0% and not charge, regardless of how long you leave it on that charger. It has happened to me multiple times and it, it is annoying until I found out about this fix, I guess. But it's not really a fix as it seemed to fix the issue for like two weeks and then it happened again. So I'm not sure if I just have to keep draining and keep teaching my deck how much battery it has, which is kind of stupid to begin with. But um, this is probably just like a Q2, Q1 issue that Q3 won't experience. Now the controls feel really good. I do like the dual track pads that the Steam Deck has. They feel really nice. Although initially I felt the Steam Deck was a bit big for my hands. My little tiny hands, I felt it was a little bit big. But after a while, I got strangely used to them and it felt natural. Almost like when you buy new shoes and they feel awkward that first week, but then afterwards they feel perfectly fine. Now this is something that won't affect you in this next part, but for me, my boyfriend has an Aya Neo Next and the Aya Neo has a Hallmark Metal Dual Stick controls which feel amazing and when I was using the Steam Deck with its regular plastic controls, it did feel a bit cheap but this isn't something for the regular user to experience as the regular user more than likely doesn't have an Aya Neo Next. So unless you own that device then you won't really notice the Steam Deck's flimsiness I want to say with the um, dual sticks and um, how they're not hallmark and hallmark just means that they won't get drift the Aya Neo next is biggest thing is that it will never get drift because it's not contacting it's just um magnets that rub up against each other i'm guessing compared to a regular joystick like in this case the steam deck that eventually it will get joystick drift but that's like a problem way into the future now i bought the anti-glare steam deck which is the 512 gigabyte and i tend to play in a dark room so it does a pretty good job i guess with the lcd screen um but I'll talk about that screen and the 1280 by 800 resolution and storage later and why I really don't like it at all. Now this next part might confuse some people. So I'm going to do the best to not confuse the average gen player. But we need to talk about Linux. Now hold the tomatoes. I said hold them. Okay, hold those tomatoes. The Steam Deck is based on Arch Linux or a branch of art linux or whatever it is but this basically means you're gonna have to use common sense when it comes to navigating the steam or sorry the linux desktop you see this store right here called the discover store this will be your best friend discover has anything you would want from steam emulators to even chrome or the browser that i use brave steam comes pre-installed with the firefox furry browser that my boyfriend seems to love so much that after this review i'm definitely gonna be questioning him a bit but if you have a preference between those browsers, go right ahead. You can even download Discord, and it's basically just Discord on Linux. Emudeck, you can get it running on here, no problem. You just go over to their website, download it, and install it, and it's very simple. Now, this isn't an Emudeck tutorial, as there's a tons of videos that do a way better job than me explaining it. But I'm really not lying to you, it really is a simple and easy process. Now, I know Linux in general looks pretty scary and confusing, and I'm not going to lie to you, when I first opened up Linux when I was 14, I was scared, but it's essentially a portable computer you have here, and I believe in you guys and your abilities to adapt to this new portable computer because at the end of the day, there's no limit to you guys because you guys are the true kings. The deck allows for you to add your own micro SD card storage and keep in mind that you can go up to two terabytes. Uh, I don't think two terabyte micro SD cards exist as of right now. The most you can get on here is one terabyte, which is what I use, but the deck does allow for you to essentially add a micro SD. Now, what a micro SD you choose is up to you. I always recommend going with name brand ones that have high read and write speeds and are durable and have high speeds and what they're able to do with the load times for micro sd cards is pretty impressive i'm not gonna lie about that it's really really impressive however this is linux 
So this isn't a plug and play experience unless you're on the Steam gaming mode, I want to call it. In that case, Steam will automatically format your micro SD card. But if you plug it in while on the Linux desktop, you're going to have to mount the SD card, which I don't think I've seen that since, like I said, I was 14. So it's really weird. Linux doesn't do anything without you telling it to, which can be a little annoying if you're plugging in an external hard drive and unplugging it as you have to go in and manually mount it and unmount it but if you go into the settings as i'm showing you right here you can make it so that it will automatically mount anytime you plug it in so you're just gonna have to unmount this external usb or hard drive or whatever anytime you want to disconnect it which is basically the same as windows when you right click and safely remove storage but for this first part you are gonna have to manually mount it which is simple but like I said if you follow what I'm showing you right here you can just easily have it so that it automatically mounts it for you even if you don't like Linux I still recommend you just open up the Linux desktop once just to see what it looks like and it's it, it's basically just a computer but I do recommend you opening it up at least once just to mess around with some settings the safe settings don't mess around with any crazier stuff because you might accidentally turn off a feature that you want you can navigate the Linux Linux desktop with a trackpad and opening up the keyboard by clicking the Steam button and the X at the same time. And I could see why some people would want a keyboard and mouse for this because it, it can be a little bit difficult. For me, I had no problem with this. Using the trackpads was really easy for me. Okay, so now I have to talk about the bad. And for me, it just comes down to the screen, storage, and resolution. Now, I know this might come as a shocker, but 1280 by 800 p I'm sorry. I just can't, I can't defend this resolution. It's not something I can honestly defend. Yes, it is higher than 720p. However, this render it at a 16 by 10 aspect ratio which doesn't seem like an issue until you realize some games come defaulted at 16 by 9 and even if you change it to 16 by 10 and 1280 by 800 resolution the game still renders at 720p 16 by 9 aspect ratio which for some games can be an issue with the scaling as some games will just automatically not load up GTA San Andres is a good example where you can't open it up at all unless you go into the configuration files which is in the less desktop version or sorry desktop section and change the files there so that it boots up in 1280 by 800 which wouldn't be an issue if it if the Steam Deck just naturally was on 720p 16 by 9 aspect ratio which is so weird to me i don't know why they went with 1280 by 800 resolution it's weird to me it does look good on emulation games like game boy advance fills up the screen so much more so maybe this is why they did it and for the lcd screen it does look bad if you know what an oled screen looks like many of you that have phones more than likely have an OLED phone since that is basically what almost all phones have nowadays where the colors are super vibrant blacks are super dark and whites are super like the colors are almost true to themselves I want to say on I don't know I'm not gonna get into the gamut ratio or whatever that stuff is because I barely understand it but I have a Nintendo switch OLED and comparing that to the Steam Deck there is a big difference in terms of coloring here and no amount of configuration on the steam's um color color calibration is gonna change that fact so i would like to see an oled screen maybe as an upgradable thing from iFixit that maybe we can buy or on the steam deck 2 valve did confirm they are working on a steam deck 2 and the storage i don't know and i'm laughing because it's funny to me but i don't know why valve went with 2230 i believe that's what this um nvme storage size is when the standard is 2280 so it this was weird to me 
all NVMEs on Amazon and basically anywhere are 2280. So even on the um, PlayStation 5, it's 2280. So for them to go with a 2230 size is very strange. I'm really happy they're using NVMe storage. That's amazing. In fact, I wish all technology in the future used NVMe and hard drives were just cut out completely. But I, why 2230? I know it's smaller, but from what I've seen, the most you can get is 512 gigabytes. Unless you're like these absolute giga chads who take a one terabyte NVMe, slice it in half because apparently the other half is just useless data, I guess. Uh, put a little hole in it and then voila, you have a one terabyte 2230 size NVMe, but not many people are willing to do this. And that's another thing. If it doesn't work, you're just out of a one terabyte NVMe. So I don't, I don't really see this being like a good solution. Like I know people have done this and it's worked perfectly fine, but some people have also done this and it's just been broken. Oh my goodness. I hit something. So I would like to see the standard 2280 NVMe size valve for your Steam Deck 2 because this isn't an issue that you can just fix right now because if you try to put a 2280 NVMe storage inside the Steam Deck, it won't fit and I don't think you're even able to close your Steam Deck. I think I saw where a guy put like the medium, I don't even know what the medium sized is and it fit but you can't you can't screw it in because it's, it's just flopping there so he covered it up with the the case and i guess that worked i don't know if that's good for the thermals or even for safety because if that thing slides out a little bit your deck will just essentially lose its hard or uh, nvme so for the future i would like to see a standard 2280 instead um i that's my only thing i don't know why they went with this small size even the small size it's, it's really difficult to find if you wanted to replace it in case something happened to the one that's in your deck unless the only way I could see it is if you maybe use your warranty valve is good known for having good warranty on these which I believe is a year if it's anything like the index so maybe after a year you can just send it to them and they'll replace it with a new one with a new warranty hopefully but for the Steam Deck 2 if they address the NVMe size the screen panel and the resolution you don't even have to give me a 1080 like P screen just give me something that's standardized on 16 by 9 aspect ratio and that's more of enough reason for me to up great honestly and i would love to definitely see an oled panel i know people aren't gonna are gonna be like why an oled panel because of screen burn-in but guys technology for oleds has advanced so much that screen burn-in isn't really an issue anymore it does exist but the switch oled that i've had since it released it doesn't have burn-in there's plenty of videos of people having the steam or sorry, the switch run for hours and hours on end. And when it does get burning, it's the most minuscule thing ever that you can barely see it. So OLED technology has come a long way. It's all over phones. So I would very much love to see this on the Steam Deck or AMOLED display or whatever they decide to call it. Besides these three things and the battery issue, the Steam Deck is by far a really, really great product. Um, that's, I can't really argue with anything else besides those four issues that I just said. And one of them is fixable by Valve themselves through software. But I understand that the average gen isn't going to be looking for this stuff. So in terms of gameplay and compatibility, the Steam Deck is capable of playing super demanding games like God of War and Horizon Zero Dawns while not at full 60 FPS and more so at a lock 30, the fact that this can play them is impressive on its own and has me hyped up for the Steam Deck 2. And just for the price of $400 for the 64 gig or the 650 for the 512 gigs, that's a really, really great deal. And like I said, if you get the 64 gig, you can open up your Steam Deck, swap it out with a 512 gigabyte if you can find one somewhere on eBay, and you just save some money right there, around almost $200 you just saved right there. So in terms of stuff like that, it's a really, really great deal. But 
I wouldn't blame you for waiting for the next version, as we all but know for a fact that it's coming, as Valve has said Steam Deck 2 is something they are working on. However, keep in mind this is the same company that said an Index 2 would be released one day. Um, that was four years ago. So yeah, Gabe, where's my Index 2, huh? You, you thought I just forgot about that? Um, I still want that Index 2. I really do like the fact that the Steam OS comes with Linux, as it, for me, it just means that there's gonna be more support for Linux games, and hopefully they add the anti-cheat software on there, so that way more games can get supported. And hopefully in a perfect future, I would love to see every single game on my Steam Deck, or sorry, on my Steam list, or Steam library, be supported 100% without issues. I know the Proton compatibility just came out with a recent update, which is amazing. Thank you so much, Val. They've done so much for Linux gaming and this is just a great way to introduce people to Linux It does look scary, but please guys. I promise you just try it out. It's really really good I really do love my Steam Deck and besides these four issues and like I said one of them can be fixed with software The Steam Deck is great for me I just wished for the for the second one these things would be fixed and there you go You have the perfect device ever anyways I've been chip cube and now if you'll excuse me I've got a Steam Deck warranty to break because I'm gonna to upgrade this tiny storage now go on and watch the vr chat review a video on how an ever expansive virtual world continues to thrive and grow as you meet new people and make new friends